Hello, I'm Julian Walters. I'm a gastroenterologist who works at Imperial College London in England. I want to tell you about a paper of mine which has just appeared in the November 2009 edition of Clinical Gastroenterology and Hepatology. The title of the paper is A New Mechanism for Bile Acid Diarrhea, Defective Feedback Inhibition of Bile Acid Biosynthesis. So what is bile acid diarrhea? Most of us will have seen patients who had resection of the terminal ileum, which has interrupted the intrahepatic bile acid circulation and has led to excess bile acids entering the colon. These bile acids then cause a secretory diarrhea. Bile acid diarrhea can be secondary to ileal disease, postcholecystectomy, or associated with other GI disorders. When none of these is present, it's primary bile acid diarrhea, which is the subject of the rest of this presentation. In Europe, for many years, we have had the CCAT test. This is a nuclear medicine labeled selenium uh, bile acid and is available in only certain countries. Low values allow us to diagnose excess loss of bile acids in bile acid diarrhea. When this test has been carried out in patients with functional diarrhea or diarrhea predominant IBS, it has been shown repeatedly that about a third of these patients actually have primary bile acid diarrhea. This has been called bile acid malabsorption. So when people have looked for the cause of primary bile acid malabsorption, it has been difficult to establish any clear transport defect. We wondered whether another mechanism might be responsible. This is fibroblast growth factor 19, which is produced in the terminal ileum and appears to have a role in signaling back to the liver and influencing bile acid synthesis. So we identified 17 patients from our clinic at Imperial College Healthcare, and we had a similar number of control patients. Most of these patients that had a positive CCAT test, they all had chronic diarrhea for many months and had had other diseases such as celiac disease, lactose intolerance, uh, colorectal neoplasia, uh, Crohn's disease and short bowel syndrome excluded. We took fasting blood samples to measure FGF19 and we also measured a bile acid precursor known as C4, which is 7-alpha-hydroxycholesterone, which has been shown to be elevated in patients who have excess bile acid synthesis. So what were our main findings? Our patients had elevated C4 levels compared with controls. This has been shown before, but we show for the first time these patients have low FGF19 levels. The patients with the lowest FGF19 had the highest C4 levels. This was true for all of our groups of patients, whether they had had uh, cholecystectomies or not. We studied a small group of patients who had had ileal resections who had even more extreme values of FGF19 and C4. We also studied bile acids and in a small group of patients studied them throughout the day. So what do the findings of this study mean? It means we have a potential mechanism to explain primary bile acid diarrhea. The problem is a failure to produce sufficient FGF19 to feed back to the liver to inhibit bile acid synthesis. This would then be in keeping with the previous publication which has shown a larger bile acid pool. There is no bile acid malabsorption. In fact, the ileum may be able to absorb bile acids more efficiently than is the usual case. If you would like to know more about the relevance of these findings, please read the paper in detail. There is also an editorial article written by Hoffman, Mangelsdorf and Cleaver, which is in this same issue. I will be pleased to receive any emails at this address. Thank you very much for listening to this. I hope you have learnt a bit about primary bile acid diarrhea and about fibroblast growth factor 19.